Jay Cutler said something to me yesterday. He said that he thinks that that one appearance by Seabum on an open stage is going to send ripple effects through mm-hmm. the open division and it's going to help contribute to um, an improvement in open bodybuilding. He's mm-hmm. like, everyone saw that that those lines and that shape and those tiny joints and that micro waist and everything that he did as a classic guy really looked good in an mm-hmm. open division. And he was talking about the days when they didn't care about waists and they didn't care about you yeah. know certain things and we had those different eras and he's like this is going to be good for good for bodybuilding win win or lose it's it's he said it's going to be good he said bumstead everything bumstead does sends ripple effects and he said mm. he, he believes that that one open appearance is going to send ripple effects hey everybody welcome to it's just bodybuilding i'm big ron partlow and of course i'm here with dusty hanshaw and the producer scott mcnally Remember to like, share, subscribe, comment, and... Ring the bell. Yes. Okay. Very happy. Very happy. Remember, IamMutant.com. Go to IamMutant.com. Use your codes Dusty or Big Ron. Get your ISO surge. Get your all in. And everyone should get on the gear. Who are you kidding? Get on the gear. Um, Use our codes. Keep us employed. Let them know that, you know, we're alive. And we matter. We matter. <laughs> um, begging for validation. So before we before we get into the show, I gotta say, Jay Cutler came by West Coast Iron yesterday. Oh yeah, what saw was that. that all about? I saw the picture. Yeah. So I gotta send a thanks out to the Supplement World crew. Um, you know, Josh and, and Travis and Adam and, and the whole team, Supplement World guys. Um, they brought Jay Cutler into the North Van store to do an appearance. They brought him up to Canada to stop at a couple of their stores. Mm -hmm. Um, But they uh, had him come into North Van. And that's about 40 minutes away from where I am. It's it's not not near. But I messaged Jay and I was like, you're coming to Vancouver? And he's like, yeah, bro. I should come by your gym. (laughs) And I said, well, I'll, uh, you know, I didn't want to like bug him too much because I'm not paying him to come here. You know, like I'm not paying him to come to Vancouver, right? So I, I talked to Supplement World guys, and they were like, oh, we'd love to bring him by. Um, he wants to come by and, and see West Coast. You know, we'll try to make it work. It's a busy schedule and all that. And they're men of their words. Jay's a man of his word. And last night, they strolled into West Coast about 6 p.m. and uh, stayed for a couple hours. Jay trained some legs. Jay signed his photo on the wall. He, nice. Um, he signed the... Uh, the pro, signed wall. The, the pro wall and uh yeah it was just uh it was really cool to have him and he had to look around and he of course we didn't announce anything because you know like we didn't want to like overwhelm him and then you know obviously we didn't want to like in case he couldn't make it for some reason like right. you know, let's say tra- traffic was crazy or something we didn't want to like you know disappoint the members there i just said so just sent you a video on instagram but um but yeah so he came in last night and um, you know, everyone signs a pro wall, but we also have this big picture of him. So he got up on the ladder and he signed a big picture. I sent you a video if you got it. I'll drop it in post production. Yeah. Oh, drop it in post. Oh, do it in post. I love it. Drop it in post. I love it. Um, so yeah, it was fantastic to have him down. And and of course, like all the members when he walks in the door and starts looking around the place and they're all drinking their pre workout, you know, they're mixing up their prevail and they're doing the, you know, doing and he, all the members are like, what? Like I can see them all double taking, like they're all mids, you know, looking over between <laughs> sets. Or like, what the hell? And then people start coming over to the turf, take photos with them, and pretty soon he pretty much took a picture with every single person that was in the gym at the time. And then they got their workout started. That's wild. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it was just <laughs> great. You know, Jay's been telling me he wanted to come by for years. Every time I see him, you, we've talked about how Jay is the type of guy that asks how you're doing. You know, yeah. How mm-hmm. are you? You know, he remembers Emily's name. How's Emily? You know, how are the dogs? Are you still riding your bike? I haven't seen any tricks lately. You know? <laughs> and uh, so Jay, Jay's one of those guys, a great guy. So he always asks, like, how's the gym? You guys killing it? You killing it? You know? Yeah. And um, so it was great to have him by. And it was just awesome because it's been years of him saying he's going to come by. So That's again, cool. thanks to the Supplement World team for bringing him by. Absolutely. Okay. Now, while so, we're on the topic of legends, 
There's another Dusty. one to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, wait, what? <laughs> oh, before before we move on, he said he said, "Hey, how is Dusty still doing those rows, bro?" <laughs> <laughs> he he goes, loves giving me crap for that. <laughs> I saw him the other day, he's still rowing five plates. Why? <laughs> why bro why? why and i go he, it's just it's just in him man it's just in him he's not ready to stop rowing five plates yet and he goes yeah. man man i don't know how he's doing it so yeah he's not smart enough to stop yeah That's well yeah, i said well he's kind of dumb so you know, <laughs> to the truth, he doesn't know any better he doesn't know any better. but yeah he absolutely he absolutely brought it up like, what's oh, he that's doing funny. man i watch his <laughs> clips i'm like oh damn yeah he remembers that's classic okay. so anyhow what about this weekend how, how about uh how about that little show across the pond that people seem to enjoy so much yes speaking of legends um that was a hell of a show uh there's a few. So here are my Cole's notes from the Prague Love show. Okay. The Cole's notes. Um, Seabum looked amazing. Yep. He brought what everyone wanted, which everyone wanted to see a difference. Right. Right. Everyone was like, well, I, we expect him to be like 15 pounds bigger. And he was. Yeah. He yeah. was like, do yeah. 55 or something. And, he comes in big, ripped, and looked amazing, and easily, easily was in like the very top end of the first call out. Like it wasn't like it was like close. Like it was he just yeah. stood out like crazy, and it came down to him and Martin almost instantly. And um, man, he could have easily won that show. Um, Martin is just a little bubblier and rounder with that, I guess, open class muscle that they're looking for. I, I'm, I'm assuming that's why Weinberger and the, the team of judges went with Martin. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, Martin looks f crazy. We've talked about how he's done such an amazing job with his physique, packing muscle on it. Um, and Martin's also the type of guy where there's nothing wrong with him. Do you know what yeah, I mean? There's nothing missing. Yep. There's nothing missing. There's nothing wrong with him. And he comes in great condition. So he's going to be the guy that catches a lot of people if they're a little bit off, which is kind of part of the, what happened at the Olympia. Like Martin was at his very best. And then guys like Hunter were a little off. Andrew jacked a little off. And he's going to be that guy that catches those dudes. And at this show, he brought, I guess, what he needed to bring. But damn, Seabrum, Seabum could have easily won that show. I'm... I'm wondering, like, I'm wondering if there's maybe a little sliver of Chris that's relieved he didn't win because now he doesn't have to do the Olympia. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, you, you do have to point out, too, this video is prejudging. Yeah. Apparently, Everyone. Martin made made a big jump. Yes. Um, yeah. Between prejudging and finals. So for, for those Seabum fans who are just really shocked by this, yeah. it was close at prejudging, really close. And then that was enough to separate the difference. Because I know, I mean, I text you guys and I'm looking at that and I'm like, so this could happen. Which, yeah, I was like, yeah, holy crap. You know, you know I saw prejudging. I, I was like, holy crap. Yeah. I think it's interesting, though, the amount of people who, like I had guys messaging me immediately, he's going to tear up that class. And I'm like, he's not coming back. Like, yeah. I, like, I'm glad that he put that to sleep yesterday because yeah. yeah. I don't think people understand if you've – if you look at where he's at in life, financially, family, all these things, there is literally no benefit. Even if he was guaranteed to win yeah. the Olympia, there's Zero. not a benefit. There's no benefit. Zero. So <laughs> and yeah, like he would literally make he's gonna make more money off his app than the first yeah. place prize money is. Like yeah. so it's it it there's nothing there's no benefit. I think in a way it was almost the you know, almost the best thing to happen was he did as good as he could possibly do without obligating him to do more <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and 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 then i had another note god damn did sean clarita look good oh, and yeah. i feel yeah, sure bad did. i feel bad because he almost got like missed in the conversation yeah because he brings that insane physique at 178 pounds that absolutely smokes 
the rest of the class. Yeah. Yep. So there's like 20 guys behind him that are 240. Right. And then no one talks about him because they're doing the Martin Seabum battle. Right. Yep. I was thinking so, the same thing. So there's Clarita going, hey, I'm the giant killer. And right. look what I'm doing. I'm just slaughtering giants all day long, <laughs> knocking them off easy without even having to pose, like walking out, standing front, relax, and you're like, oh, top three. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you got to give Clarita credit again. Um, he, he just does the he, – he does the most with the body weight of anyone in bodybuilding. Like yeah, if you, you literally does. Math, <laughs> he literally like does he the math. He's yeah. literally getting the most out of his, you know, pound per square inch of anyone on the planet in yeah. his physique. And it's unbelievable. And he's a, a, an amazing bodybuilder. And, and then another interesting conversation came up. What if Chris wasn't in the show and it was hmm. Martin versus Clarita? It might have been a different a different situation then, right? Right. That you could have been it, that could yeah, have been interesting. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, I think it's just great to know that Martin is the fourth best on the planet. Chris was close enough that even people who knew understood it could go either way. And yeah, I think it went yeah. the right way just to be clear to anyone watching. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But, I understand. You know, it's open I think it did go the way it should have went, but that just quickly helps everyone understand how good he really is. Yeah. That without preparing as a open bodybuilder ever since since turning pro, he's uh, right there in a, in a coin flip with number four in the world. That should kind of help everyone understand what could have been had he chosen. You know, yeah. obviously he made the right decision, but uh, I think that that was enough and it made it fun. And it was interesting to watch because you realize how big he is because. Probably fifty percent of the people I follow, he was in their story at some point hmm. over yeah. the last two days. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. and and um, and it, you know, if you think about it, like Chris was racing with a governor on his engine that whole last, time. Yeah, the whole time he only had the nitrous installed three weeks ago. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Or however many weeks ago the Olympia was. What was it? Yeah, not know, many. Five. Five, five or six weeks, weeks ago? ago. Well, I know. So, they, yeah, I know. Yeah, you know did like, five weeks of prep with his new coach, so it's somewhere around that timeline. Yeah. So the, it's uh, it it's it, it's it it was a fantastic way for Chris to kind of go out as an open bodybuilder, which you know he said he wanted to do. He just wanted to go out as an open bodybuilder, and and I love that. Another little thing. I know it was it wasn't a big deal, but he came out with blue trunks on, hmm. and I will always remember Chris as a blue trunk bodybuilder because <laughs> he wore he wore blue trunks at the 2015 nationals when i saw him as a junior huh. Huh. and he was wearing blue trunks when he turned pro at the north americans and i i i'm not saying that that's why he wore blue trunks but i'm saying that that's why i'm gonna believe he wore blue trunks it was like it was like him going back to like that was me when I was a kid, you know, and, and there's a lot of pictures of him as a junior wearing blue trunks at like provincial level show and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm not sure if he wore other colors. I can't remember, but I just always seem to remember him as like wearing so, blue trunks. And I, and you know how he is with the symbolism, like wearing the Gretzky Jersey and the Jordan Jersey and all the stuff he does to the weigh-ins. I, I, I guarantee the blue trunks were something that he did for him. Yeah, or I could see or, that. or, or, Chris only has one pair of trunks. He just never. Yeah, yeah maybe he just had the same trunks. I'm not going to keep like, doing this. I buy another pair. Yeah, well, I still got this <laughs> pair from 2015. I can yeah. wear those. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to have someone give I'm me another pair. I'm not going to buy a new pair. They're like 100 bucks. <laughs> I only wore yeah. once, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you wear them for yeah. seven minutes at a time. It's fine. He just borrowed them from Ian. Yeah. It's not like a wedding paper. dress. You can wear it yeah. again. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's like now they're just in the drawer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Been in the top okay. drawer for ten years, and here I'm making a big deal out of it. Yeah. I'm like, no, nah, that's not what it was. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, that's what I like. That's how I am. I like to, you know, I like to imagine there's a. Story. We just we just saw Braun and my personality take place right there. <laughs> yeah, Braun's got this depth, and I'm like, or oh, that shit was just in the drawer. <laughs> 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 totally totally 
So, yeah. Hey, I've got this video. Now, I haven't watched this yet. Victoria saw it this morning, and she was like, oh, I watched this video with Chris. It's on his uh, Instagram. And she said it was really moving to her, and it kind of, like, summed everything up. So I messaged the guys this morning, everybody at home. And I was like, guys, don't watch this video yet. Let's watch it together. Let's see what this is all about. So I don't even know. on our show? Yeah, I don't even know what we've got going on here. But since we're on that topic, I'm going to bring this. I think this is the one here. We don't even know which one. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Oh, I can only imagine. Here, Giles and AJ. Legs are huge. Conditioning from the side is fantastic. Color perfect. Color perfect. The hairline is tremendous. Wow, look at that side check. The hairline. Wow. The glutes are in, Giles. Yeah. He certainly didn't lose any conditioning without this weight cut. He will not be small today. Beautiful. Definitely not. Beautiful. What amazing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's cool. Go. Yeah, very, very cool. He put That's up cool. a uh, he put up a post with a uh, whole bunch of most musculars. Yeah, and he said, "Man, it's fun to hit some most musculars." <laughs> <laughs> Been waiting a while to do that. Been waiting a while to hit some most musculars <laughs> and have it really count. Yeah, you know what I mean. Was this it? You know? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. That's classic. where they actually call for the most muscular, gentlemen. Most muscular. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah you know and <laughs> front cool. lat spread too just imagine oh, yeah, that front lat spread shot being great imagine yeah, he, being he wins that <laughs> imagine being a classic guy being him and having that front lat spread and the judges never ask you for it oh i, I don't know how cool <laughs> the front lat spread isn't a classic pose anyways you know so to walk oh, out there right. and, and to hear them say you know front double bicep and then they say front lat spread and you're like man i've been waiting like 10 years for this <laughs> you know i guess eight years or whatever he's been doing classic for you know but waiting eight years to hit this pose in a in a in a lineup yeah. next to other people and just destroy everyone you look, know? At, look at the uh look at the lack of light coming through between his arms and his lats yeah there's oh none. yeah yeah no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost and and, nothing know, yeah yeah, it was awesome. And I liked what Giles uh, and AJ said there. This is a great day for bodybuilding. And yeah. um, Jay Cutler said something to me yesterday. He said that he thinks that that one appearance by Seabum on an open stage is going to send ripple effects through hmm. the open division. And it's going to help contribute to um, an improvement in open bodybuilding. He's like mm-hmm. everyone saw that that those lines and that shape and those tiny joints and that micro waist and everything that he did as a classic guy really looked good in an mm-hmm. open division. And he was talking about the days when they didn't care about waists and they didn't care about you yeah. know certain things and we had those different eras. And he's like, this is going to be good for good for bodybuilding. Win win or lose, it's it's. He said it's going to be good. He said. Bumstead, everything Bumstead does sends ripple effects. And he said hmm. he, he believes that that one open appearance is going to send ripple effects. And also, you know that trend that we all see as coaches where like every single guy who is a certain body weight thinks he has to do classic? Yep. Right. This might help them go, oh. I, I think to a lot of guys you know, we're, have we're doing classic because they like Chris. Yeah, yeah, they were. Like, but you're, but you're not a classic bodybuilder, you know. It's it's right. It's a weird or or they're smaller because they're getting Chris. started. 
Yeah, no one is. Or they're getting started, you know, and then that's, well, I'm light, so I'll do classic because I'll do better. And it's like, not, not really. really. So I, like I, I, I agree with him 100%. That'll be a game-changing scenario for him. Yeah. yeah. And then there'll be some open guys now who won't be so obsessed. Like, <clears throat> like you know, my training partner, Braden, he's in this situation. I mean, every time we prep him, I mean, it's gotten, it was more so this year than ever. But, you know, he gets down to like 232 and he looks fucking good. Like the glutes are in, the hams are in, the back is in. He looks pretty good, but he's got to go to 224. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, we had the talk, a little bit of the talk. There's more of, more of it coming, but, you know, like, is it time right to now. just do super heavyweight? Yeah, we're having Let's it right now. Let's have the talk with him right now, Braden. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, just right the now. four of this us. This is the talk. <laughs> but like, it's, it's, you know, and, and I know that, you know, a lot of guys see themselves as a classic guy because they do classic and everyone tells them, man, you look great. You look yeah. great up there. You a lot of reinforcement. Shape, structure. There's a lot of reinforcement, right? You got a real small waist. You look good up there. Good lat spread, you know, and they think they see themselves as a classic guy, but there does come a day where you just get sick and tired of like dropping down and maybe just do a show at 234. You know, for example, yeah. and see how you look, and you know. So I think there may might be like that ripple effect might be a thing. You know, a lot of people just go, you know what? I'm just going to try bodybuilding because you know, you, we all go to these shows and we see, you know, there's two guys in the heavyweights. Yep. And then there's like twelve guys in class D for classic. Yeah. We're like, man, like half of you could have done the heavyweight bodybuilding and like been really good. Looked maybe, awesome well, too. Well, yeah. At the, at the regional level here, you notice oftentimes, you know, obviously the, the classic guys go first uh, and the classic guy wins the overall. And then that same classic guy wins the bodybuilding overall. Yeah, it's very right. normal here. And I yeah, think that that's a crossover regional, people yeah. need to understand. It's like, it's it, at that level, it's not that far. Work your way up and figure it out. Like when I think of classic bodybuilding, if I'm not thinking about prior to my time, do you know who I think of? Cedric. I don't oh, even yeah. think of the classic division. I think of what they mean by classic bodybuilding. It's like, well, he's massive, but it Cedric. was beautiful. Like you couldn't, there was no angle he could, you know, when you're, you're like, oh, don't give him a, don't give the judges anything bad to look at. Cedric's like, I can't. Yeah, I, can't. I look great in every way. <laughs> I can slouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, remember Cedric just walking around the expo in a tank top? Oh, God. Like, the man. number of stories I have with Cedric that just blew my mind. Well, I saw him before he won the Arnold in his hotel room. And you, for those of you who are, like, watching and listening, you don't understand how completely disconnected he was to how good he was. Yeah. He ran through his posing, and, I mean, my jaw, I mean, I must have my mouth open because he goes, what do you think? And he gets, like, real close to you. And I go, I I don't have words. I don't, I don't think I, I should be like, speaking to you right now. I was like, yeah. that's ridiculous. I go, you look ridiculous. Chris, and he goes, say something, like, Chris. Yeah. He's like, really? You think I do? And Chris is just like, go over here in terrible light. Yep, you still look awesome. And he, <laughs> he yeah, like, you know, but he, it was like a complete disconnect on how good he was. And you could, it would just watch him move, which was fun. Like while Chris was talking, I'm not exaggerating, but he would like, you know, drop his hands down and you're like, well, your arms look stupid like that too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite video he used to have up on his uh, Instagram, which I wish was still there. Uh, he was goofing around with his kids, putting the Christmas tree up, but he didn't have a shirt on. And you just watch him. He was just playing with his kids, having fun and being himself. And I'm like, you look, you're a better bodybuilder putting a Christmas tree up than I am doing my very best at life. Yeah. 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 There's <laughs> like, guys out there like that, that have that structure and that shape. And they're just, they're, they're the ones who truly are meant for classic. Yeah. You know, the guys that look good doing anything and everything because of their structure and, and, and shape. Yeah. But if yeah. you outgrow the size, you got to remember, that's kind of the point of what Jay was saying is, well, then be a classic open bodybuilder. Open bodybuilder. Just let your, yeah. you don't yeah. have to stop having great lines and put on size. That's where the things get lost. It's like there's room on your body. So you yeah. have a choice. You can either limit your self in classic or let it roll. I mean, Chris didn't have a limit himself. He was still the best in the world. Yeah. yeah. If he was seventh and could just move up and been a great open. I guarantee it. You would have done that. 
Yeah, like just think of all the guys that maybe they came into that show weighing 250 or something, you know, at 5'8 or whatever right? the hell. Yeah. And they think, okay, I just got beat by Clarita yeah. and Bumstead. And neither one of those guys gave two shits what they weighed. Politics. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I so, bet you Bumstead you know, sponsored the show. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like you, you know, I think, I think back to all the shows where – I worried about being big and yeah. it, it never helped me. Right. You know, obviously you don't want to like plummet body weight when you're dieting. We've been through this. It's not, we're not going to have this discussion again, but you know, like fussing, whether you're 252 or 255 is usually not really a big deal. Like, you know, at which one did you have your abs tighter at 252? Go up at 252. Like, you know, the guys that are push, oh, I got to be 255. And then, you know, they get beat by 178 pounder and they're like, maybe I didn't have to be 255. <laughs> yeah. So maybe <laughs> there's going to be a bit of that and it, it'll help. You know, I'm just saying anything that makes open bodybuilding better from a regional level up. So I'm Agreed. hoping there's, yeah, you know. I would say we have a couple guys that are, that would have been good classic guys if they didn't put on as much muscle. I mean, like Samson. In Andrew Jack, oh. like both those guys, incredible. Like, because when I, it's funny you mentioned Cedric Dusty, because I feel like both of those guys are reminiscent to me of yeah, what Cedric they are. had. You know, they mm. are. yeah. I wonder what Andrew Jack's classic weight would be. Was he six? That thing is, I feel like those guys because they're so tall that yeah would get down to weight. I don't think they would look great. Like, I think their frames are so big, even though they've got the structure that's, that makes you think classic. I feel like if you were to find out what he would need to weigh, there'd be so much muscle missing he couldn't compete. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't agree with that because this they still have the, the small bones. joints. Yeah, they have the small joints. You know, they like have I the, got the round muscle head, bellies. So like, who knows? <laughs> They've got the round muscle bellies. I, I think because they'll just – what I think we're seeing now is – what he should be, you know, like he's, he's obviously like, we'll take Samson. I think that he's mm -hmm. like, this is, he's, he can't look better than this. You know, he still has maintained his waist, everything. Uh, but I think you'd have, you know, if he hadn't put on all that muscle, I think he'd still look, you know, pretty good. Just my thought. I'd be curious to yeah. see what he looked like when he was younger. Cause I, I think, think a lot of those guys in the made world it. though. Yeah. I don't know. I, you know, it's hard to think say. About it. you just said his waist didn't go up, but his shoulders yeah. did. So, yeah. That enhanced his taper. His legs are bigger. That enhanced his taper. Yeah. So it's, it's, everything it's gets to... actually more enhanced if you shrink where most of us, and I mean, I think Ron can look back. I know I can. I can see the line where to get big enough, my waist went up with it. It yeah. was a good trade for me because I wasn't put together well enough anyways, but I could really look and go, ooh, you know, if I'd have slowed that down for like two more years, mm. my finish line physique would have been better. It still wouldn't have been phenomenal but it would have been better than it was yeah you know so it'd be interesting yeah. it would it would definitely be interesting. I, the reason i think about though is like i see some of the guys like i don't know if you saw ron but manny tried to come down to a uh, classic yeah. yeah yeah and number one he didn't make it and number two he looked terrible to me he yeah, just looked just skinny didn't have, the, didn't have enough muscle yeah it was all gone once he he Funny. came down and you know, it was really weird, like looking for somebody, and and he's not as genetically gifted as those guys, obviously on the structure, but similar. So, it's interesting. I, I just hope that with that time, that mindset is that Jay is right, as it goes both directions, because you know, a guy like Terrence Ruffin, what's he weigh in at when he competes? Do you know, well, he's like, yeah, right. At, I know he's right around his cap, and he's had to even right. fight with that. I'm not sure. I can't remember what that is offhand, but it's not heavy. Yeah, he's another one where it's like, you know, if he decided to for fun to do an open one, I would think it would be interesting. You're like, oh, you're really good at bodybuilding in general. He could keep growing. I'm sure of that. You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. We, have, we need to have – there has not been enough Terrence talk recently, by the way. We got to get him back in the we, mix. We really do. <laughs> he's got his chance now. Now Chris is gone. He's Let's get in there and, and mix it up yeah. with Mike, see what we can get. I, I Nikki loved Mike. She thought, and then we watched some of his videos and stuff after the show because I never followed him before. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah, you would love his like, training too, right? You know, yeah. He, he was just it was classic. He was he was talking about after the show when they're comparing to Chris, and he's laughing in his head because people are like, "Oh, is he going to beat Chris?" And he's like, "There's no <laughs> way I'm going to beat Chris." <laughs> but meanwhile, I'm thinking it was th it was closer than you think, bro. 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, we were right. there. It was close. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Okay. What's next, guys? We got some questions. You, we got to do that crossover question that, oh. that you brought up. <sighs> yeah, we had Spe- a very important speaking of question. <laughs> yeah, speaking of Chris, would you guys? So this was uh, we had some listener questions, and this was uh, let's see. I'm I want to make sure I get the wording right on this one. Yeah, don't mess um, this up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, hold on, just a second. I had closed my phone, so I, I lost it there. We have a bunch of them here too, and a bunch of them are funny. So here's the deal. Here's the question. Uh, if you had the the choice, either an eight to twelve inch dong, but <laughs> an average skinny uh, physique, or and this is this is where it ties in, guys. So hang with me, or a C bum body, but three inches at full power. <laughs> which which do you? I, I already pick? know my I, my answer is so easy because well. a C bum body means you get to use that thing a ton. <laughs> and listen, she's not going to know that I'm disappointed her until we're already there. She's in too yeah. late. Yeah, onto the you next, know? Dusty. So, you, know? yeah, you got what you me, wanted out of the I, deal. And to can- me, I'm good. Plus, I'm thinking about comfort, like in the gym, walking around, jeans. Where am I going to put that thing? It's no, too yeah, full. It's a lot. <laughs> you can't wear leggings, you know? Yeah, no. With a, with a three oh, inch I already have a hurt knee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a three inch dong you probably get a lot of butt sex for sure <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the skinny dude with a 10 inch dong i mean i can still play guitar <laughs> so i could still get some chicks so yeah but know. then you're gonna then you're gonna i mean i've, I've heard of, you get shut down i mean she's like let's do this then she sees that and she's like no yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. right. Unless we're Pasta jumping rope with that thing, I'm out. Those like, aren't no. out for the the full <laughs> subway experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm telling you. I, I think yeah. that thing would be a curse. It's like that's, muscle with bodybuilding. It's really just to tell other people about, you know. But That's the dilemma that's as Women don't as actually time. want it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Not, 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 not all of them can quite handle the uh, the real estate. So, okay. Well, either way, for. though, you could make a lot of money with your physique. You know what I'm saying? True, true. You're just insuring yeah. different body parts at that point. Yeah, yeah, um. yeah. <laughs> You're not insuring your biceps. Yeah, yeah. With with uh, the, with 12 inches, I think you just go straight to Los Angeles. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just goes. <laughs> just, <laughs> is that advice? Is this it's advice the for the younger? To do. If, if you're if you got 12 inches, you fire up an OnlyFans account, swallow your pride, and just start I think it's cashing Vegas now. In. But yeah, you know, yeah, start collabing with all your yes. favorite OnlyFans girls. Yeah, it's yeah. perfect. This is Ron's this porno is advice. Is that what this is? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I am it's not an agent. Advice. I'm not an agent. But Just if you want to give me fifteen, if you want to give me fifteen percent to help you out, I give you some advice. Okay. Okay. What else we got, Scott? Uh, we had a bunch of them. You know, we had some listener questions. And by the way, guys, we're going to need a bunch more listener questions. So let me take a minute to encourage you guys to uh, leave us some good questions for the next episode. We had so many that are kind of like off topic, on and off. Um, I have some regular ones as well that we could toss in as I got a good some one. less fun ones. So, I got okay. Ron, Ron's what do you guys loaded. have? I'll I'll load one up for for. Dan I got right one here. from. I got asked this one because it's from a friend. Wow, he's kind of a friend. It's from Scott Weston, kind uh, of a friend. Our our, uh, our <laughs> Scottish our Scottish buddy. <laughs> oh, our fellow I, our fellow mutant. I have a a thing I want to throw in from Scott too. After this, we'll go. Oh, ahead. okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. He said, if you were offered $5 million to watch your whole life up to this point on TV, but your entire family has to be present, <laughs> would, would you do it? <laughs> uh, well, from what I heard, mine got to live through it during the coma anyway, so I'm good. Right. Roll. Everyone talked about what you – everyone everyone shared stories about what you'd done while you were out cold. So Yes. I mean, they had it. access to my phone for you know, like a month. I never so. told you this, but the one time Dusty did this, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of truth comes out when someone's on the deathbed. It's like, well, yeah, it's you time know, to talk. since he might not make it, I think you should know that Dusty did this once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I didn't get the money, but they all found out, so we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So are you familiar with the animal in Scotland called the haggis? I thought no, haggis I know was the, a meal. I thought it was a food. Yeah, yeah, yeah they have that. Dare. But they're these like little brown furry creatures, and they're not real, okay? But they're supposedly like this animal that lives in Scotland, and there's kind of this ongoing thing about them, and they have like like fake mockumentaries of them online. Oh, and it's, it's like a, it's like a kind of a cultural joke. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, okay. Dave Crossland has been sending me videos and pictures of these things, and he thinks that I think they're real. So each week on the show, like I, he shows me some Haggis stuff, and I just act like, oh, my God. And then I ask him, because Victoria and I are going there after she finishes her PhD, we're going to go to England, and then Dave and I and, and all, his wife, we're all going to drive up to Scotland. And so I, Dave thinks that I think that You're we're going see to one. see the Haggis. Yeah. So anyway, right. that's an ongoing thing. But I asked Scott Wesson about him, and so we were talking. And you know what else he told me? Do you guys know what their their national animal is? Yeah, that's one version. There's many, many versions of the haggis. Like they're cute. I'd love to see one of those yeah, if like they existed. I'd, I'd take a haggis. Play yeah, it the- says it says it's a mythical creature that is said to be the origin of traditional Scottish dish, the haggis. Yeah. Huh. So, okay. do you guys know what the national animal is for Scotland? Don't look what? it up, Ron. No, is it the haggis? Is it a mythical animal? It's the unicorn. It's no. literally their na- That's what Scott told me. It's literally, he was like, dude, we're trolling the entire world with this. <laughs> First, they've got the Haggis, and now they're like, oh, yeah, you've got unicorns too. They're doing anything to sell people to move to freaking Scotland. Oh, wow. Now we got unicorns. It is. It is. <laughs> that's amazing. They're just like, ah, we're not, we're not going to do this. We're just going to troll everyone. Yeah. 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 Good play. That's amazing. And then you know what else they troll people on? If you actually get Scottish people behind closed doors, they don't have accents. She's <laughs> gone. They just speak normally. Bullshit. They only talk like that when we're around, just You're to make us think me. they. Yeah. Whenever there's a whenever there's like a Canadian or an American or a British person around, they they become indecipherable. Yeah. They but turn it up actually, out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. They don't actually speak with any accent when they're behind closed doors. We should. Yeah. You should. It'd be cool if we could do that. Like you know, I'm thinking. I'm gonna tell the girls that if they ever move somewhere. Just change everything for like a month. Just yeah. roll with it. Just roll the shit out of everybody. Speaking of which, we got this comment too, and I, I want, it was perfect timing here. Can you Drama. read that for us? Can you read that for us, Ron? <laughs> Is that how all Canadians say drama? Drama. I love it. I love it. <laughs> we, we discussed this over dinner. <laughs> Yeah, hey, quit causing drama. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, our prime minister used to be a drama teacher. Oh, not a drama teacher, though. And he has things shipped in on semis, not semis. Um, semis. Oh, well, yeah. The whole, the, all the semis. All the semis going by on the highway. So Victoria yeah. says drama, but she says pasta. Oh, ah, I don't know how that works. Yeah. So there's, I think so. There's a Scottish certain, thing. <laughs> there's certain words. There's certain words that get a double pronunciation. Like, I think I sometimes say drama. Okay. It depends. So, like, for example, on Entourage, his brother's nickname is Drama. Right? And I don't say drama. Huh. But that's his name. That's different. I mean, if my name was Dusty, you'd still say it wrong, even though it's spelled correctly. Right. (laughs) And then, but then there's a word schedule. And sometimes I say schedule. Do you? And I, I, I think it just depends on who I'm talking to for some reason. I don't it's know what, why my brain. It sounds like you have water in your mouth. Schedule. It's fancier. Yeah. It's fancier. fancier. Maybe yeah. if I feel like I'm need Classic to up it, up it up. a little. Yeah. Classic it up a little. Yeah. Do you, do you say favorite the way that we spell it or the way you spell it? I, I say favorite. Yeah. But it's yeah. spelled and like you spell it say different. Or center. I'm always like centre. So What's I quite often, because I, I, I like, I have a little bit in me that wants to be efficient. So yeah, yes. when I type the word, let's say honor, H O N O R, the spell check will come up telling me to put a U in it. Oh, really? Because I'm Canadian. So it's the British, right? They want, they want to put a U in it. And I'm like, fuck off. And I cancel yeah. it. Yeah. That's his American side. Yeah. <laughs> USA. USA. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, so we're sort of, I'm sort of stuck. We're stuck. We're stuck between two worlds. <laughs> it's better than like I know Palumbo. I've noticed he can't say anything that ends in an A. Like Decca would be said uh-huh. Decker. Whoa, <laughs> that's that's the, just, that's just the changes the spelling altogether. It's the the New York thing. It's it ends. I can't think of anything else offhand, but I've heard him talk about you know a Decker cycle before. That's fun. right. Oh, that's fantastic. Do yourself some Decker. Oh, boy. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So you never Maybe answered about, about the tea. Would you, would you let your family watch your whole life for $5 million? Who, me? I answered. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Scott attention? didn't answer. I answered immediately. And, I mean, $5 million's a lot, you know, and there's <laughs> most of it has like pretty me. much been said on a podcast anyway, you know, so yeah, yeah, there's yeah. not much left. I'll, I'll take I'd it. I'd do it yeah. for 500 like, I don't Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it for like an Applebee's gift card, you know? Right. <laughs> It'd be pointing at the screen. <laughs> I did that. I did that. Yeah, that was me. Yeah. You thought I wouldn't yeah. do it. I did it. See? It's not an exaggeration. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Same here. All right. So here, here's one. <clears throat> good, good question. There seems to be two sides of the spectrum that people are on when it comes to training. Side A, train like a bitch. Side B, Sling around weight so heavy that nothing is getting accomplished. How do you go about keeping people in the sweet spot in between the two? Hmm. And I, I've actually, it's funny that came through and I've, I have a few, like, it's funny. I, I deal with both as with my clients because I have them send me pictures and videos and I will see the ones where I'm like, so was that a warm up? No, no, no. Yeah. Was yeah. And then I, I have to work those ones up. And then the yeah. ones who are on the other end of the spectrum and I, I've even, I mean, I caught myself doing it in, in my peak where suddenly you're like, and it wouldn't, maybe you're like, oh, wait, the depth on that incline is an inch shallower than it used to be because I'm chasing a number. You know what I mean? Uh, and you'll start yeah. to catch those things. But that was a really good question because that is the, it, it does seem to be one or the other when you're working with people and trying to squish them both into the middle a little. Um, so how, have you guys had the same experience and, and how do you kind of help people get that? Yeah. So I think I said it on a show last week or the week before, but I said the bulk of what you should focus on are just quality sets with full range of motion where every rep looks the same. And then when the reps start to really slow down, you've got a couple more to grind out. If you just make that most of what you're doing you're on the right track and yeah. and you have to get those reps that slow down unintentionally where you're pushing the bar as hard as you can and it slows down on you and those mm-hmm. are where you know you're right on the verge of failure there with one or two of those and even if you don't have a spotter you know you can't always train to failure on everything right so if yeah. you just get into those reps on everything and then you start to use, you know, the new terms RIR and stuff, which we never use. We just said train as hard as you can without a spotter. Yeah. <laughs> but um, and then if you do have a spotter, you go to the rep where they have to just touch the bar a bit. And that's mm-hmm. technically failure. If you just do that most of the time, you're crossing all your T's and dotting all your I's on on executing your sets. Right. And um, so, so I know what you mean. Like I've had guys where you're like, uh, you got 10 pretty easy there. And they're like, no, that was a hard 10. And I'm like, no, that was an easy 10. That bar didn't even, <laughs> that yeah. bar didn't even slow down. Like they didn't even slow down, yeah. man. Like you didn't even have to pause for a breath there to grind one out. Like you can get way more than that. And then you see the sets where they get two good reps and then they start to shorten the range for three, <clears throat> four and five. Oh, and yeah. you're like, you're training, you're training too heavy. You need to back off a plate, a plate aside and, and get, to like robot reps. And that's yeah. why I say robot reps to all my clients. I say robot reps, robot reps. Every rep should look the same and yeah. your form should be standardized. And um, yeah, just really focus on those basic principles for executing your sets. And um, people should watch you train and think, man, you're in control. Yeah. Like you're a machine. You look like a piston. You know, you look like a, like, you, you look like a mechanical device moving the sled. <laughs> you know like that yep um it shouldn't be sketchy people shouldn't be watching your train going oh fuck you know? <laughs> oh god <laughs> yeah i've, I've found know? it's actually easier though um for me to tone people down like, yeah i i have a i have a client that um jennifer she used to work with you scott <laughs> yeah yeah she is an animal in the gym oh yeah 
Like I love it because she 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 got the memo that if she wants to put on size, she got to crank. But the nice thing is, is if I need to make a correction, it's really simple. I look and go, hey, pull two tens off of that, one yeah. off each side, and then send me that video next week. I think it's going to be better. And she's also totally fine mentally to go, okay, cool, no problem. Yeah, but. It's really easy because in that case, I'm not saying it's like you said, it's, it's harder to give them the gray area. Like, no, I'm telling you, you had more in you. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Where with yeah. her, when it's heavier, or it's just gotten a little sloppy or whatever, or I can point something out that moves and how her body's moving. She can watch the video back and go, oh, I see. And just make the adjustment. And it's just an immediate click. So it's one of those yeah. scenarios where I have, I've had to work harder for people who weren't quite there. <clears throat> to get the intensity up uh, than I have on reversing someone who's who who will listen. But the the knack of going to the gym to assassinate is just in their blood. Yeah. You know? There's uh, another thing, too, with guys who do too many forced reps. Mm -hmm. And, like, I was in that <clears throat> camp. I've been in that camp when I was younger. You know, when you're wondering, like, why am I not getting stronger? Why am I not getting stronger? And then, like, I would back off the forced reps, and I would just go to the failure rep, and my strength would go up. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, I'm burying myself too much. Like I'm doing two to three four reps on every work set and then I'm not recovering. And, you know, so, I mean, I've had this talk with a lot of people, um, you know, like, like for instance, like sometimes like Braden, just my training partner, he just took a week off in Mexico. Yeah. And he came back from his holiday and had like his strongest set of incline Smith machine ever. Nice. Yeah. And so... If that happens to you, maybe you're, that's a recovery thing. Your, yep. your nervous system, your nervous system is fully jumping. So maybe ask yourself, like, am I doing a few too many forced reps on all my sets? You know, can I get this, this quality of recovery without the holiday? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. so if, if, you, if you take a week off the gym and you come back weaker, that's different. If you take a week off the gym and you come back stronger, that means that maybe you're actually pounding yourself into the ground a little too much while you're in the gym and you're doing too many forced reps. Um, yeah, and, too many uh, forced reps, too much volume could be. Yeah, too much. Yeah, it could be just too much volume to just, you know, that, that sort of thing. But, but um, you know, you're not quite recovering fully. And it's not just muscle tissue that has to recover. It's the nervous system too, you yep, know? Yeah. So a lot of times we think, oh, well, I'm eating all the time. I'm sleeping lots. I'm on the, you know, I'm on some tests. I, my muscle tissue is healing and recovering. But there's also that nervous system you know, which is, that's why power lifters don't train to failure is because they're, it's all about executing things perfectly all the time. They never, you know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. firing, firing, firing. Um, so there's, you have to keep that in mind too. Um, that's, there's, you remember when you guys started, like you're thinking about the overtraining, we used to do like a couple forced reps, then into negatives, and then yeah. do a strip set, like yeah. all together. <laughs> like, yeah, you're like that's more than an entire chest workout needs to be for your one set. You yeah, know? and it's one thing if you're like you know doing a set like that, or you know yeah. occasionally, or you're timing it like this week I'm going to do this on this or whatever. But some people get a little bit every single workout they're just smashing all those intensifiers. And, yeah. you know, you follow guys like JP and you follow guys like Hollingshead and you follow guys like Kuba who really talk about intensifiers. Like I mentioned, when I trained with Kuba, they did one forced rep on one set. Okay. Yeah. And the rest of the sets that day were just a failure. Like, so yeah. when you hit the failure rep, they just grabbed the bar and racked it. And then and he'll they, change that too, depending yeah, on and they like were where scheduling he's at in the it. season. Yeah. They were scheduling it. He's like, that's mm -hmm. what we're doing for a few weeks right now. Yeah. Um, and, and then you look at how we talked about how Cuba had made those huge gains. Yep. And like, which was huge when we saw him. So like, you know, is Hollingshead huge? Is JP huge? You know, like these guys aren't just, just ballistically crushing beyond failure every single set all the time. Right. I think so. the key is there too, that, that I see and I, and I think of it myself when I was getting started is you take everything you watch from these great guys. And then it seems as though the people are following him take it too far. So it's like when we, you know, when, when we had Justin on Shire and he's like, guys are sending me videos and it's moving at like an eighth of the speed that I move at. Right. And they're like, see, I'm going controlled. And he's like, that's not what I said. 
You slowed you know, right the heck down. Yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. You, you just you took what I'm doing and then you took it seven steps further. And same thing with all of these. It's 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 why the I feel like that's where the reps and reserve thing is such a funny topic for us. Because what people don't understand is I'm not arguing with the science. I do know the science breaks down. If you leave two reps, it's the same as far as they're, they're saying for tissue as going to absolute failure. But the problem is, and the science even show this, most people's perspective of where that two reps is, is two or three reps early. Yeah. Right. Like you could so probably do reps five. and reserve well, Dusty. You would yeah, be able to handle that because you know what yeah. failure is, you know? But for me, here was always, this was my mindset even when the science came out and I read it. I said, okay, so if I leave two reps in reserve, you're not telling me it's a better result. You're saying it's the same. So it's safer to me to just go to failure and make be sure you get it every time. <laughs> because if not, even I mean, we've all done it. I, I talked about this on the show before. I've uh, my form slipping. So I dropped the weight. And then you look at the video and you're like, my form was not slipping. Yeah. You know, right. so how many times would even an experienced lifter leave an extra rep or two and now you've actually you're you're less than you could have been? So to me right. it was simple. Like as soon as I broke it down, I'm like, oh, they're not saying it's more gains. They're saying it's equal. Fine. Right. I'll, right. I'll do the extra to make sure that I get the, right. the, the best possible gains because chances are all of us who think we're going to absolute failure are probably hitting that reps and reserve mark anyways. Yeah. So and, yeah, and, then there's a, and then there's an argument <laughs> that you don't need as much volume if you do that too. There's an argument. Yeah. That you, yeah. yeah. So, okay. That's been proven yeah. with a lot of my clients. As soon as my guys yeah. who train hard, it's like, oh, crap. God, I got to cut down five sets off of this workout. Like the yeah. ones that train hard, we're, we're like snipping and you watch them grow and get stronger. So you're like, yeah, snip a little more, snip a little more until it stops yeah. working. I'm like, all right, add that one back in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. Good. What else we got, Scott? What's, it's your turn. What's next? All right. Got another training one. It says, I'm a big fan of progressive overload style of training uh, like you guys preach. However, every time that I'm about eight to 12 weeks in to progressing, uh, heavy deadlifts or variations like rack pulls, I end up with a nagging low back. My form looks good on video, but I can't hang with the movement specifically for a long time. Um, I've had the thought of switching to lighter weight, um, but doing 20s on that with uh, an upper back squeeze or something like that. Um, thoughts on this? Have you ever changed up how you progressed a movement like this? I mean, I was never the deadlifter Dusty was, so maybe I shouldn't speak on it. But there are certain movements where I just didn't do them every workout. Like I did them every second workout or something like that. Like I was the kind of deadlifter that would deadlift like every second back day. Yeah. So I wasn't necessarily like as obsessed with them. Um, and then also too, you know, I would mix it up a little bit more. Like maybe I would do two sets of 10 one workout and then five sets of five, another workout and like, you know, that sort of thing. So I wasn't necessarily as much of a structured strength, you know, progression guy with the deadlifts as other people, but you got to take care of your lower back. Cause also like, I, I also did, you know, 400 pound bent over rows and I also did, you know, 400 pound stiff leg deadlifts. And I also did, you know, heavy T bars. And I also did, so there was, I sort of saw the lower back as like, it can only handle so much total volume. Um, so you got to make sure you're healthy and I don't know, are you getting massages? Are you stretching? There's all these factors that go into it. So something's obviously piling up on you, but I'll defer to Dusty who lifts way more than me. Well, Scott, <laughs> tell, tell me what you think first, because I'm just going to top in the end with what simple stuff. I wonder if he would have benefited from some type of a deload in there a little bit yeah. sooner. You know, I feel yeah. like whenever like power I, lifters would do that. Yeah. You're not just, you know, going straight up till infinity i feel like whenever i've hurt myself there were signs that if i would have listened more closely i would have probably pulled back a little bit sooner i would have dialed it back for you know some type of a deload and then mm -hmm. maybe rebuilt back up uh instead of just trying to go straight through the roof because eventually at some point we're all going to get hurt if you're just constantly going up, 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 up without any kind of relief so that'd be one of my thoughts but like ron said dusty uh, deadlifts have never been my my strongest suit. I feel like you're the uh, you're the, the the pro on this one. Well, you well you nailed the thing though. Is that's that was the first thought that crossed my mind. Is he said around twelve weeks? I'm like twelve weeks is a hell of a blast. 
like to, to go straight through, that means you're progressively overloading for three months straight. That's a long blast. That's very successful. So to we said me, eight, eight to 12, but even eight yeah. is a long time, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's you, you, you got to listen to what your body says as far as like, you just, I mean, you literally nailed everything. What is your body saying? Cause chances are before he gets hurt, the strength started slowing down or started flattening out. You know, those types of things happen. The next factor is if, and I assume based on the question, because he seems pretty well versed, that he yeah. is doing what Ron said. But if not, like I deadlifted every third back workout. Oh, okay. Because one day was a, was a row. Then the next workout was going to be like a rack dead. And the third workout would be a deadlift. Also being mindful of the fact that I used uh, stiff legs on my hamstring day. Okay. So there was, so there was always you got to keep that in mind is so three workouts for me, isn't three weeks because of how I structured my training, but it's two, it's over two weeks in between deadlift days. And I think that's something that people need to keep in mind. So if you're not running at least an AB workout split or like I did an ABC, then you're not giving yourself enough time to, to grow strength and muscle mass anyways. Cause for me, it's really simple. If, if I did deadlifts today, and then my next back workout was a rowing movement and my next back workout was a rack dead and then the fourth one is back to deads that's plenty of time for my for my strength to have grown on the other movements and actually expect this one to grow and plenty of time between changing that stimulus because there's a big difference between the pull on your low back from a deadlift the pull on your back from a row or a rack dead so but uh, those two things but the my first and foremost is what you said scott which is i think you need a deload for sure so pay attention anybody it doesn't matter what lift you're doing i know we're talking about deads but if you start to see your strength flatlining a little bit or you're having a little bit of a niggle in your body that's not an injury but just something you're noticing these are signs where it's like, okay, you can have that for a week or so, but after that, that's about to become an issue. Take one step back so you can take two steps forward. Everyone is really nervous about getting out of the gym. And uh, Nikki actually told me she, she thought it would have been good to take a photo of my legs um, because I haven't touched them in eight weeks. Yeah. I hurt my leg on September 4th. Yesterday was the first day I did a, a, one, body, one, one leg training and my legs look the same. Yeah, I don't know where people think your muscle goes if you take a break. You know, I mean, they're probably down a little bit, but overall, you're, people think if they take a week off from the gym, they're going to lose size. And it's back to what Ron was saying. It's like, no, no, give that CNS a break. You'll come back very, very strong. And anything that you didn't even know was bothering you is gone. I think that's good. We did have a bunch of stuff still, and I wanted to throw this one out there. I, I, basically, two things. Uh, one person said, how about the best stacked dishwasher wins the hoodie? I'm against that. I think that I think we should go with. I'm judging it. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> here's, here's what I think. Somebody else suggested the whoever is the best at triggering Ron. Here's my thought. How about the next person in Dusty? You can't play. You already oh. have a, you already have a mutant hoodie, and plus it won't two, two X won't fit you anyway. Uh, the next person who genuinely triggers Ron will win yes. the hoodie. All right, I'm gonna get a call from someone from the gym. He's like, I got him. I just put gum <laughs> underneath a bench, and he lost his mind on the show. On the show. On the show. <laughs> Not in real life, Emily. You cannot win the sh the hoodie either. Um. <laughs> I saw. I oh, go ahead. No, 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 please. I saw a product that came through my Instagram the other day, and it was like an ad for something, and I had to stop and watch it because the, the, right away this the the ad starts. Are you tired of putting all your stuff on the gym floor? <laughs> <laughs> Ron was and, like, and I it am. Shows a guy. He like throws his phone on the ground, throws his keys on the ground, throws his wallet on the ground. <laughs> And then gets on the machine and starts doing a set, and then it and it, it just keeps showing all these people dropping all of their stuff on the floor. Yeah, bronze by the losing machine. his mind. It's like, wait, are you tired of carrying your stuff around the gym and putting it on the floor? And it shows a guy like put his his keys down, his wallet. Everyone's carrying their keys and their wallet and their phone around and just dropping them on the floor next to machines in this commercial. Like this is something everyone does apparently. <laughs> and 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 uh, and it says you don't have to do this anymore. And then he says, after cracking my phone, you know, uh, cover several times, I, 
I finally did this. And it's this new little bag, like a neoprene huh. bag that kind of stretches. And it's got like a cell phone pocket and a water bottle pocket and a wallet pocket and a key pocket. And it's got a magnet on it. So they just stick it on whatever machine they're on. Oh, okay. And it was advertising this little bag. And I just thought two things. I was like, great idea. Probably going to sell a whole bunch of them because people already stick their phones to stuff. Like I see people yeah. that listen to music on YouTube. So their phone is like like playing videos the entire time they're training, which is weird to me. Right. Yeah. yeah. And they just walk around and like, so like they'll be on the press machine and I look down on the floor and their phone is just on playing like a YouTube video. Yeah. Killing their bed. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Like to me, that's weird. You can use Apple Music or Spotify yeah. or anything like, or you can get YouTube premium and then it you can shut your phone off and it keeps playing, which is amazing. Um, but, but I thought he's going to sell a bunch. And then I thought, I can't believe people need these. I can't believe people yeah. are putting their stuff on the floor. <laughs> Ron was happy and then irritated again. Yeah. All at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Putting I'm glad that the these floor idiots that are putting me. on the floor aren't doing it, but <clears throat> I can every see time like I drop that. my phone on the floor, I think of Ron. Yeah. <laughs> I just free fall it down to my foot and like softly cradle it. And then I set my I water bottle down on the floor, you know, like I set it on the floor and stuff like that. I'll throw my belt on the floor, but I don't put my phone on the floor. I just, nah. that's just I don't it's know. It's too man. far. I, I got to show you this, guys, this, because it's great. So I get this uh, sent to me on Instagram and it says there are two types of people, normal people and absolute savages. And let's see if I can make it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and, I uh, and it said and, and it says to me, why would anyone, all capitals, load a bar like that? Savage. And it was Christina. And I sent yes. back Ron Wood, asshole. She sent it to me. <laughs> and I said, Hey, that looks like a drop set waiting to happen. <laughs> yeah. She that's said true. that to me. That's as soon true. as she said that to me, I go, Ron Wood, asshole. For the audio people, it was a plate and then a dime and then a quarter. So, yeah. yeah. And I was backwards. like, that's a drop set. You're getting ready to do a drop set. That's what I think. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. I was like, oh, it's good to know that everyone knows the the differences between everyone us. Knows. Everyone knows. Everyone <clears throat> knows. Christina knows. <laughs> All right. I got some I rapid fire, guys. Yeah. Rapid okay. fire. Let's go. What's more important, doing the right thing or doing things right? Oh, Jesus. That's a, that's philosophical. A good yeah. philosophical question. Doing the right thing. It's I think, like it's sort of similar to the the idea where a decent plan executed with violence is much more effective than taking too long to come up with the perfect plan. Isn't I can't remember what general said that. It's like a, a that's not his exact quote, but yeah, he's like yeah, yeah. I like that. I'm siding with you. Take right. it, yeah. Dusty. Why don't you take this one? Um, how does one find their purpose in life? Do I do the cheesy answer that everyone says? Your purpose finds you. Just remember, That's it's it's dumb. rapid fire. That's the only yeah. thing. No. Yeah, I have no idea. I think most people don't find a purpose in life because they're too lazy to execute anything. There you go. <laughs> that, that's my magic. It's my full answer. I've gotten a little tired, Scott, of the uh, feel good, everyone's good, everyone's worth it. Yeah. It's fine. You're enough. I'm like, maybe you're not enough. Your life says you're not. Get your shit together. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so here's the here's the exact quote. It's uh, General Thanks. George Patton. Oh, should have known that one. His quote is: "A good plan, violently executed now, is far better than the perfect plan executed next week." Hmm. I wouldn't mess with that guy, and he said violently. Yeah, I like that was almost in your head. Next, Ron, what's your favorite pie? Also, would you eat pie pre or post workout? Um, my mom made the most amazing lemon meringue pie from scratch. She didn't use any product. She didn't use a pie mix. She used lemons and she made lemon pie from fucking lemons. And then she made the crust and, uh, she set the standard for lemon meringue pie and it was always unbelievably good. And I still love a good, like, you know, made from mixed lemon pie. Don't get me wrong. I'll, I'm not going to throw lemon pie away. But uh, <laughs> but a, a good lemon meringue pie is, is that's just something else that just takes me back to being a kid. She used to make one for the family and one for me. 
and I would eat an entire lemon meringue pie easily in like a day, just plow through it. That's and then fantastic. second best is a, a, a really good apple pie with some vanilla ice cream on it. That's good. I like that combo. Yeah. Everything else is like down. When you way. described your la- the, your mom's lemon pie, I thought of that meme where like the da- the kids are on the dad's lap. Hey, dad, how did you, you know, what did you do? Oh, I made a lemon meringue pie and the kid goes, fucking legend. That's fucking what I thought legend, of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're a fucking legend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, next one. All right, favorite gym that you've all trained at? Ooh. Well, this is tough. You know, I mean, if Ron doesn't take his own gym, I'm going to murder him because uh, there is he that. didn't design yeah. it. Yeah. But if we had if we had if we had to, my favorite gym has nothing to do with the gym, and it's the it's the place, and it's it's uh, Temple, which you haven't trained at Temple though. But Temple would be would have been my favorite uh, for that reason. But because we got to go with one we've all trained in, I'm going Dinos. Dinos. I haven't trained at Dinos. You haven't? No, I wasn't there. No. I wasn't there. I wasn't but that said, it's just all like each of us. I think is what he meant. Yeah, so you yeah. could no, go at Temple. You could go with Temple. Yeah, yeah, Temple was not like an emotional experience, just walking in that place. That was the, one yeah. of the places where like before I, I didn't even get in the room yet. I could hear screaming coming up around a corner and I was like, I'm home. I turned this the corner fantastic. in the alley and I looked down on the ground and I saw a little a, a, a balloon and a syringe. Oh, so wow. Like, yeah. So, you know, you're like back alley junkie area. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, this is a real deal. This is the shit." This is the, that's how and, you knew it was the yeah, hardcore gym, huh? Yeah, fucking hardcore gym. There's like junkies outside. Did you feel like you're back in Vancouver? Dumpsters. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I'm home. <laughs> yeah. I remember the uh, I remember the black mold by the hack squat. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. there's got to be a, a got to be some kind of building code for this. And, there's reasons um, and, you don't put your phone on the floor there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah Temple was something else, but yeah. I I mean, obviously, I I I do have a hard time at other gyms because. I think like why is there leg press facing that way? It's hard to load plates on it. Oh, why yeah. don't they like because you know I'm, we're pretty proud of our gym and we like the way it flows and functions and always trying to improve things. And I'm very lucky to train at West Coast every day. But Dino's is a different. That's just a magical place for me. It always will be. Um, yeah. And so yeah, it's there's a lot of great gyms. Don't get me wrong. Like there's I'm a lot of friends that have a lot of awesome gyms, but. Um, there's something about whenever we go to Dino, it just takes me back, you know? Mm-hmm. I'll go with quads. I like quads, Jim. Oh, just like yeah. all the Great equipment gym. and everything. Oh, yeah. It's cool. I, I would wish I could have trained at quads more when I was there. I, I did legs there and it was awesome, but yeah. I trained there with Chase Irons and he mm-hmm. pointed out to me, he was like, hey, here's a picture of Brown right there and there's Dusty right there. So oh, I said, your nice. picture's up there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great one. All right. Let me see if I got any other ones here. Uh, best form for the barbell row and the T-bar row. I'm having trouble connecting to my back. How can we elevator pitch him how to get better back activation? Well, Probably wait, have wait, to what, was the, what was the more. two things? The, the T-bar and the barbell row. Well, I think the first thing on barbell row that I have to throw out before uh, anyone gets confused, you know, barbell row is terrible for lats. It's an upper back movement more than lats. So I feel like sometimes people are expecting to feel their lats activate like they would on a parallel grip T-bar row. So make sure you understand what muscles you're supposed to be feeling when you're doing a barbell row is my first thought. Yeah, your lats will get pumped, but there's a whole lot of mid back and upper back and yeah. Yeah, it's just not the primary spot that you're trying to hit. Whereas when you're doing, that's why usually if I'm doing a barbell row, when I go over to the T-bar, I'm doing the parallel grip handles because I'm pulling into the low lat or, you know, and then you're really yeah. activating there. Dragging so, the elbow past the body. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that would be my first thought on that without seeing how someone's executing. Um, would you say lean forward more? Well, bend over more. I'm just thinking maybe he's standing up too much. So he's getting like yeah. that, like high Traps. shrug thing. Yeah. Going on. yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. You know, but sure. bend over more, like really try to, I tell people do a stiff leg deadlift, like hinge mm-hmm. at the hip. So you're kind of hanging from your hamstrings and, <clears throat> and, and, and your hamstrings are really stretched out and you feel like your glutes and hams are, are supporting you and then row from there. Yep. You shouldn't bend over at the lower back. You know, you should stick your butt out, like bend over at the hip and hinge back and then row. 
So that's yeah, I think you know that people do. think about the people think about getting their like they're stretching, like they're trying to get their hands as close to the floor as possible. And really it's about throwing your glutes as far into the wall behind you as possible and yeah. just letting that hinge take place because of it. That's where yeah. you're, your power is going to come from your legs that way. Yeah. So agreed. Personality trait that won over your partners. Oh, man. Oh, I got to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, you're starting. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't have a Chris Bumstead physique, so we'll start there. Yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. That was a call back to earlier in the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Completely yeah, yeah. joking. Completely yeah, yeah. joking. Um, Not Bumstead, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't take the Chris Bumstead physique guy, so. Um, um, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to go out on a limb and sort of think I can answer this because um, she's mentioned it before. Yeah, but um, and I mean it's weird to like comment on yourself. Uh, yeah, weird. that's why I asked. It's I don't weird. have to. Yeah. Uh huh. It's weird to comment <laughs> on yourself, but I I think that um she's said this before and I've heard this before, but um I'm exactly what you get like. I'm, which sees what you get? Yeah, which sees what you get. Like I'm not gonna be different. Like you know, how do I put that? Just right up front. This yeah, me. you are no who bullshit. you are. Yeah, this is what yeah. I like. If you don't like it, it's not going to work. I'm not like there's nothing hidden that comes up six months from now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, really? I, I, you never told me that. Like, no, it's like, right. I'll tell you everything right now. Like, <laughs> oh, you want a date? Okay, Lay it out here's there. what I do. Here's what I like. Here's what I require. <laughs> here's what I'm broken with. Here's the things that are wrong with me. <laughs> Here's a list of foods that I are unacceptable. Here's a list of foods and restaurants I'm never going to. Yeah. Things Don't I'm never think doing. about putting mayonnaise on anything. Yeah. 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 No yeah, mayonnaise yeah. in the house. Yeah. 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 No sandwiches. Yeah. Trips I'll never take. Here they are. <laughs> like and 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 it's very I think that's probably one one thing is like like just boom. Here you go. Are you in or are you out? I like that. So here's the problem. I had the advantage here. She's sitting right here. And I said, hey, I muted you guys. What made you decide to stick around? And then she just walked out of the room. So <laughs> I think now she's trying to figure out why she's still here. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I mean, talk about the ultimate loss. I was like, I have the advantage. I can just ask. And she just left and she's confused. And I think she's calling a counselor. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> I think honestly, it's just when things click though, you know, yeah. when you just, I, I think people th expect there to be some thing, but I think it's when it's effortless. Like when I hang around with Ron and Emily, it's very obvious. It just works, you know? Yeah. It, it, when you see them no, together, you're like, Oh yeah. yeah. And I've had, I mean, I've had friends where you're with their couple and you're like, well, this isn't going to go long. These two are vinegar and, water <laughs> i just i just actually asked her she said uh um inappropriateness yes <laughs> yeah. but at the right time she said but then she said um integrity and consistency there we go so, jeez i got a good one in the room and you got integrity and consistency damn yeah, it. and your, your wife left the room <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> she just went like this and walked out i don't know either yes yeah. yes mickey and just got up and left the room <laughs> i got nothing oh that's but yeah funny. i would i would so i was kind of close to the consistency thing like like this is me mm -hmm. it's not i'm not going to do a radical change on you mm -hmm. out of nowhere this is me i'm going to be this way till i i'm dead yeah. Yes. Those are actually great. I, I do I do wonder oftentimes when I see people, like I have a friend that is actively looking for a, a partner, and I feel bad in this world because I see so much going on. And I'm like, good luck, bro. Yeah. It, and that's yeah. both ways. It's not like, oh, there's so many good. It's just it seems like finding a fit that really, really functions is a lot harder than I realized when I was a kid, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to waste time. Like gotta Agreed. like first date list your fetishes. Like let's yeah. get this on the table. First date, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you gotta make them uncomfortable. That I, I you know it's funny, I actually think the same thing. I feel like you have to put things out quick. It, it shocks me when people are together a really long time and then so they're like, I found out he doesn't want kids and I'm like, You didn't cover yeah. that earlier? 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I found out he's I found out he's a furry. <laughs> You're like, wait, how did you not get into that like yeah. Right up front, because yeah, I don't think yeah. there's anything wrong with just putting things on the table. You're not like it's not like on the first date you're suggesting you're getting married. It's like here's everything, just in case there's something in there that you don't want to deal with. Yeah. We could cut this off before we get to dessert. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's classic. Well, I still got nothing, so I'll never know either. Everyone, I'll never know no, either. She's still there. She just saw me reaching like crazy, and she reached out and took the hand. Yeah, that's all I yeah. can think. I'll of. help this guy. <laughs> That was it. Anything else, Scott? That was uh, it. You're, uh, you're, you're a rescue dog, Dusty. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I was in the pound for too long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were about to put me down. She so adopted like, a senior. <laughs> Literally. But he's already broken in. Oh, you know? God. <laughs> he's relatively housebroken. Let's give this a roll. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, okay. God. That's terrible. Okay. So we good? Is that an episode? I think it's an episode. I'm happy with that. Yeah. We wore a lot of red today, gentlemen. We didn't oh, yeah, even have did. a memo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks to the last five minute crew, obviously, for sticking around. And uh, we appreciate you guys. Remember, like, share, subscribe, comment, and ring the bell. Yes. And of course, I am mutant.com. Go to I am mutant.com, get your ISO search, get your all in, and everyone should get on the gear. Oh, yes. yes. Remember, codes dusty or Big Ron, keep us employed, keep us relevant. Yes. You know, help us out, keep the show sponsored. That's why they sponsor the show, because you guys use the codes, you know. So yeah. if you like the show, use the codes. That's how it works. And remember the Think Big Patreon, keep a producer homed. Thank Scott's going to eventually need new headphones and a new microphone and still working on the new mic. Load and, yeah, yeah. Still you a long know time. How it works. Keeping the show going and all the shows going and also uh, the rest of the Think Big channel. Make sure you support the other shows, Drugs and Stuff and the the Cuba show. Does that have a name yet? No, we don't have a name. It's just the welcome the- back is what I say. Welcome back to Think Big with Cuba. Welcome back to Think Big with Cuba. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, Something you know, like you got the, what else you got? You got, uh, we got uh, Muscle uh, Mind, Blood, Sweat, and Gear. Mind, blood, sweat, and, uh, gear. Uh, and we've been doing some Bodybuilding Nerds Radio again. Once oh, oh, damn. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Awesome. Okay. We're going to do another one of those this upcoming week. So. Awesome. That's awesome. That. Okay. I love that one. Okay. Well, thanks to everybody. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, again, it was a good week for bodybuilding. And uh, I, we all had fun watching the show take place this weekend. And congratulations to Martin for winning it. And of course, Bumstead for doing what Bumstead does for bodybuilding. And uh, and of course, uh, we got a shout out to Clarita, our fellow mutant, who uh, yes. set in the standard for anyone under 180 pull. Well, I was going to say anyone under 180 pounds, but actually anyone <laughs> under 280 pounds, he yeah. set the standard. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Congrats again. And remember, it's just bodybuilding. Oh.